the fights are irrelevant in a way because they're born to be killed. So, oh, so if, they, if we were worried about their rights, they wouldn't even exist. And I guess we're not advocating for the same rights, like to have like ballet lessons or anything, or <laughs> vote for Brexit referendums. Free, free, free you know, speech. It's just literally that basic right to be respected enough not to be bred and needlessly killed oh, they, when we yeah, don't have to. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I, that's I all it is. That. That's all you it know. is. Yeah. So we can do it. And actually, you know, I've even yeah. thought of it myself. As much as I love a chicken sandwich every now and then, whatever, I could definitely give it up. And maybe I will in the future. Hold on a second. How'd that change happen? Hey everyone. If you saw my last video about the three attacks I think are facing the animal movement, then you probably already know I'm passionate about bringing rights back to the animal movement. And this isn't some romantic or dogmatic appeal to the past. I found that by incorporating a rights-based approach into my animal advocacy is more effective from both a theoretical as well as a practical perspective. Now, if we have any hope of bringing rights back to the animal movement, rather than focusing on the organizations through more of a top-down process, what I think is more likely to bring about the change that we need is a minority of passionate individuals from within the grassroots movement. And that's us, right? So with that in mind, I'd like to share a chat that I did a few months ago, which is one of the best chats I've ever had, especially from a rights-based perspective. They not only challenged me on my position, they helped me to further explore how to approach these conversations. With that, let's go to downtown Brighton. Need you to listen, I need you to hear, and don't show anything. What do you reckon? I mean, what do I reckon? Oh, what do you think about it? Well, I, I know it anyway. Uh huh. I'm not sure that's true about male calves in the sphere of shot are considered worthless. They're growing up with meat, aren't they? For veal. Um, some. I, my understanding is it's more expensive to raise for veal than it is to just kill them. I know it seems counterintuitive, but the raising, the rearing process, that's my understanding, what I've read. I, that, I think that's the main reason for it. I think you're right, though, some are raised for veal, but it's not all. Do you think when we use other animals, we violate their rights? Um, what do you mean? Like, uh, you know, I guess given a rights is kind of a way of protecting an interest. I mean, do you think animals have interests? Um, you know, interest in living or being respected? They weren't raised to be killed, would they? That's right, the right. So, and the, I guess then, then the question so is if... rights are irrelevant in a way because they're born to be killed. So, oh, so what, if, they, if we were worried about their rights, they wouldn't even exist. And, and I, I, from my perspective, I think that's the solution. Because the question is... Them. Yeah, it's not yeah. breed them in the first place. Right. That's true. I think a way of respecting them is not to breed them yeah. if we're just going to kill them. Well, why didn't you say that in your post? I do over here, in fairness. <laughs> There's it, we're kinda, it's a bit of a collaboration. So it's, it's more the... Um, more the the footage flicks, flicks back and forth between individuals versus violating their rights. Right. But you're right. I think a lot of people talk about just the the killing, yeah. and it's a whole system of breeding, and yeah, yeah, it makes sense, right? I mean, well, actually, my my brother's a farmer, and uh -huh. he has sheep. Uh huh. And, uh, they have to go through the same process. You know. They take the lambs away. And give them out of milk and we uh -huh. have milk. Uh -huh. um, so it's the same process. And I'm kind of... Uh, I mean, I guess it's an industry... Like any industry, there's always victims. I mean, I think, you know, oil industry creates a lot of pollution. But we all drive around in cars, right? No one's, yeah. no one's blameless. I think that's a great point. I mean, veganism's not perfect. It's just a kind of a, a trying to move forward I, I, that. I, look, I'm not criticizing yeah. veganism. Yeah, I'm I hear just, that. I'm yeah. just trying to sort of maybe being a devil's advocate because I grew up on a farm myself. And although I yeah. was never, you know, it always breaks your heart when yeah, the calves or the lambs in this case are taken away. Mm. 
you know, you kind of accept that part of the process for people to have milk if they want milk or meat if they want meat. Now, they are, the, 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 obviously, the solution is to not have anything for us all to be vegan. Do you think if we could find a way to respect other animals, we're more likely to be aware of those environmental issues, such as oil, and move towards more of those renewable? Well, you're obviously going at it from this, let's do this one first. For me, right. I would do the petroleum one first because I think that's a much greater danger to, to the environment, uh, much more immediate danger to the environment and to people. So, uh, you know, you're on a computer there which has got its own litany of... People, I mean, the guy who made that computer is probably four years old working in a, in a factory in China, right? Right. So, with a, yeah. they, I mean, for me, there's, there's, there's you know, there's um, victims in all kinds of successful industry and corporations and farming and animals are just another one. Okay. That's yeah. what I feel. Yeah, and, and so why, why not do both? Plays. You know, why, 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 why? Yeah. Yeah, I do you agree. think we have to choose or can well, we just try to do, do it? You well, know, you we don't have to select. First, like, right? but I, I think say, do a, work, on, work on them all. I think there's a new group that's actually working on combining those efforts between the environment and the animal side called Animal Rebellion. But the question is, what do you think is the leading cause of like CO2 emissions? Well, you're going to probably tell me um, cow farts. Are you? Or? In addition to cow, cow farts, but just animal agriculture in general, the whole system. Yeah, yeah um, that creates a lot of CO2. And that's, you know, three times a day. Choice. Three times a day we can make a choice. I don't know how much we can stop driving. I think there are th things to consider there. Well, you raised some good points. Stopping but by, driving is much more inconvenient if you want to go on a long distance, especially if you're a vegan and you, you have a car. But mm. I think, you know, if you're going to ask people to give up meat and respect animals, fair enough. But I think you've also got to change your look at your own life. I agree. No, I agree. Yeah, Computers, it's cars, yeah. You know, the car park there that's causing an environment. And, you know, whoever comes and drives that away is causing environmental damage on the environment. So. I can tell you my personal experience I mean, was. This, I, yeah, you know, this is kind of this. What I think this is more immediately kind of uh, seems a lot more kind because it's about animals and living creatures and obviously you get a lot more sympathy because it's, and I, I respect that and I respect the fact that you care about animals but the truth if you're talking about environment issues if you're talking about the cost of the environment and all people they, you know you've got to look at a load of industries they start with petroleum and mm -hmm. then go on to technology and how, how you know how how many fridges are built every day and thrown away? Where do where they go? Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, the, 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 the landfill waste is, at the, well, obviously, there's more people than ever been on Earth. Is it a, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, it's beyond, you can't even claw it back. You know, so, as much as I sympathize, on, a, on an animal level, I've always liked animals myself, although I have eaten meat. And uh, I, and, I, and funnily enough, my brother who's a farmer, he loves animals and he gets quite attached to his animals. But he also has to make a living and he also has to, and that's what he does for a living, you know. And if he didn't do that, he'd have to do something else. But he can do that. So he chooses to do it and it's what he knows. And obviously the victims are the, the animals, always. And it is, you know, it's, it's quite a brutal industry. I mean, his is a very organic farm, so it's, you know, very free range. But, uh, but still, it's, there's killing involved. But obviously, the more, you know, battery hens and that kind of angle is, is hideous, you know, it's torture, you know. But, like I say, I think, um, you know, it's, it's sad. Um, but I guess some people can live with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I guess I, for me, it's it's probably one of the biggest things we can do. I think it's great that you're thinking about like what we can do in our day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, even more deadly. Yeah. Um, I mean, three times a day, if we have meals, are you know we can make a decision. Yeah, the thing is, you know, it's first of all, no one has to eat three meals a day. Secondly, no one has to well, meat three meat three meals a day. I mean, people don't eat meat three meals a day on the whole. I mean, I have breakfast, and I have cereal and toast or whatever. I might have some meat in the lunch, and then I probably won't have any. You know, I might have fish or. You know. I mean, what about the fish? Do you care about the fish? I, if, I was you know pescatarian I mean? for 12 years, okay, okay. and then yeah. vegan. There's a clip. I think my bat, my computer's running low on battery, but of the Japanese 
these pufferfish right. who makes these ornate patterns on the bottom, bottom of the seafloor. Yeah. And for me, it just clicked like, yeah. I'm not really sure about yeah. fish, but why not err on the side of the caution? Well, they don't like you know? to kill, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think mean, that's I a good way to put it. Fish. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a true story, I was in New Zealand. Uh -huh. It was the first time I ever went fishing. I was, uh -huh. I was doing a festival over there, but I was doing a comedy festival. Cool. And uh, they took us all, all us comics, out on the boat. And we all caught these little fish, which turned out to be the bait, the much bigger fish. Okay. And they, they said to me, you know, who wants to have a go? And I went, oh, I'll have a go. I've never fished before. I literally never fished. And within 30 seconds, I caught this kingfish, which was, I mean, really huge. Yeah, my partner's a Kiwi, so I'm familiar with yeah, the setup out there. And, it really, and I fought it for maybe 20, 30 minutes to get it on the boat. And when I did that, I, and I realized just how that animal, not for superstition, you know, how desperately that animal is fighting for its life. Because I thought, you know, when you catch a fish, you just reel it in and pop it in the boat, and it gets, sort of gives up. But that thing, that, that animal was fighting, like, I mean, you know, it was probably as where that pillar is when I caught it. Mm on that wall and I and that took 30 minutes for me to get it onto the boat and it was so exhausting and I realised that so I know the fish sits um. and I still eat fish but I've made me respect fish a lot more because I thought you know these guys don't want to die either and there's a lot yeah. of people who think you know Oh, little cuddly land, little calves, because they're like little pets. They look a bit like dogs, they've got four legs. Yeah. You know, we've all got dogs at home, or cats, we love them, they've got curly animals. So there's a lot of people fighting for that, but no one gives a shit about the fish. And I, if you stood there with your thing, like, did you know that fish suffer when, they, you know, people would probably laugh at you. But for me, fish have got as much of a reason and an argument to be left alone and to live than... I know people don't, well actually no, that's not true, they do raise a fish to kill. I mean, there are trout farms, and there are salmon farms, there are mussels farms, you know, lobster, the lobsters get grown, they get bunged in a pot alive, boiled alive. You know, yeah. I mean, how horrific is that? That's more torturous <laughs> than anything that a, a cow goes through, let me tell you. I think you raise a good point, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, and if you were to hold my head underwater, I'd probably play all around a lot you like a fish does above water. Right? So you it's, know? yeah. Uh, so I just sort of feel like, uh, in all honesty, I think there's a lot wrong with the world. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. this is one of the many things that, you know, so yes, you, I, I admire what you're doing, you're giving up a day to do this, and good luck to you, and I hope you turn a few people around and, you're, and you know, that's what you want to do. I mean, I I drink soy milk anyway, because I'm sort of, uh, I have a lactose intolerance sort of thing anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's nice. But then again, soy milk causes a shitload of problems in the in the rainforest. You know, I mean, rainforest. Well, the so Amazon, the yeah. fire now, right? That's a, brought some of that to well, I mean, not cover like it should. Just to grow soybeans. So. And the question is, what percent of soybeans is fed to animals? Well, probably a lot. Yeah. But you know, I, it's not <laughs> just for that. It's for for everybody. And also, yeah. soy goes into a lot of other foods. It doesn't just go into soy milk. It goes into you know other other products. My understanding is it's about 85 to 90 percent go right. towards animals. Is that right? So I think if, in, in general, when we're filtering the plants through the animals, yeah. um, it takes a lot more land, resources of all kinds. So, or, so I mean, back to the environmental side, which I think might sounds like it resonates a bit more with you. Yeah. Have you have you heard of Cowspiracy, the documentary? Which one? It's called like Conspiracy, but Cowspiracy. Right. No. If you ha if you're interested in the environment, I mean, yeah. that's well worth a watch. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't mind watching those conspiracy videos, and I and I and I think you know, fine. But I do find them a little bit. They're a bit biased towards the, th the point they're trying to make. So I'm sure Cowspiracy will come up with all those numbers to support at that particular view. You know, if you speak to my brother, he'll give you a load of other stats. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure. Percentages and stats and numbers are all very well. But I think as human beings, as a race of sensitive people who care about the world they live in, there's a lot of work to be done in educating people at least as much about this as, uh, you know, as petrol business and everything else. Yeah. But listen, I don't, yeah. want, I don't want to be a boring old farm. No, 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 I've really enjoyed the best conversation I've had all day, honestly. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just love people when they're good, thinking about good it. Good for That's you for doing yeah. it, man. And I don't mean that in a patronizing way. I, yeah. I, I really respect you for doing it, giving up your day. 
to, to do something you really believe in. There's nothing better than that. So I hope, yeah, well put. I, hope, just, I don't think I'm going to stop eating meat as a result. Funnily enough, my wife, she gave up eating meat when she got pregnant with our first child. She's never eaten it since. It's just like a weird thing. I've heard about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know anything she about it, but yeah. But, um, so we can do it. And actually, you know, I've even yeah. thought of it myself. As much as I love a chicken sandwich every now and then, whatever, I could definitely give it up. And maybe I will in the future. Right. Um, I, I, think, I think what you're doing is great. I think it's interesting. I think, you know, yeah, yeah. let's hope that... You know, my fear, again, is that, you know, okay, you know, you, 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 you get rid of all the cows, they have all this extra land. What happens to the land? What, about, what do you think about returning it to the wild? But I don't think that's what would happen. I think what would happen is some rich guy would buy it and make lots of houses on it. Well, and that brings us into capitalism, doesn't it? Yeah. This is a whole different. And that's the sad <laughs> thing. That yeah. The reality is human beings are just a bit fucked up and yeah. don't really give a monkeys about anything. But we, we've got you know. we've got our own individual um, in, uh, influence we can make, though, right? With yeah, the daily right, decisions so. and through the petrol industry, animal use, and that's yeah. why I don't come at it from a stats perspective. It's more rights perspective. Yeah, yeah. Because regardless of what percent CO2 emissions, there's, their rights are still being violated, which to me is a bit more yeah. of a compelling argument. Yeah, except that um, the problem with rights, using the word rights, is that rights is very much a kind of moralistic word. It's an intellectualism, isn't it? It's, it's an, it, you're intellectualizing an animal thing. I don't think it's their rights. I think it's their feelings. You know, it's, it's the, you know, they are born and then they're killed. And that's it, you know. But for me, the answer is just don't have them. Yeah, stop, I agree with that. I agree with that. Them. Well, I think that's more the difference between kind of legal versus moral rights. Because mm, yeah. if we're talking about feelings, I mean, that's basically what a right boils down to, isn't it? You know, we have feelings and interests that are protected by the rights. I mean, I have an interest in yeah, peacefully right demonstrating. Got legal, I mean, you know, you have human rights and uh -huh. animal rights, and but the, but they're measured on different scales, aren't they? You know. Yeah, I guess whether we're I mean, born like, with them example, or like. You got them hit yeah. a puppy. You don't know, you know, you kick a puppy, go the street, kick a puppy, people are going to go, what a bastard, and you might get a fine, but you do that to a child, that's a soul, you're going to might go to jail. So we, as humans, we have different views on mistreatment and rights of animals. And, yeah. And you can't look at an animal's rights through the same lens as human rights, because, so that's the well, I think that's just too naive, and I think that discounts a lot of, you know... That, that, that kind of it works against your argument in a way. People just go, what animal rights? You know well, what I mean? And I guess we're not advocating for the same rights, like to have no. like ballet lessons or anything, or <laughs> vote for Brexit free, referendums. Free, free freedom you know, of speech. It's just literally that basic right to be respected enough not to be bred and needlessly killed oh, then, when we yeah, don't have to. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I, that's I all it is. That. That's all you it know, is, yeah. I think the right not to be, to be bred, which is a weird thing, isn't it, right? Because you're, you're giving something rights that isn't a, doesn't exist. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, well, let me give you a card. What was your name? Hey, Jeremy. Jeremy, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Honestly, best you, conversation of the whole day, so you. really, really you, appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, check out the website if you want. There's a full video on there now if you want. Conspiracy. Okay. Well, so that's that's the main one, I think. Oh, and you Yeah, and that's that's just my personal one. Yeah, yeah take, take care. care. See ya. Take care. First things first, thank you for watching the whole video. I thought about cutting it down more, but it just seemed too good to do that. I'll keep my closing thoughts short. Now you may have noticed my new favorite question when it comes to applying a rights-based approach, and that's, do you think when we use other animals, we violate their rights? And I often try to work in saying that it's completely unnecessary, just in case they think there's some type of biological requirement to use other animals. Now this isn't the only time I asked that question this day. Let's see how some other people responded. Do you think when we use animals, we violate their rights? Get me out of it. It's true, yeah. But you raise a good point. Is there any way we could do it where we're not violating their rights? So, and, okay. yeah, can I give you a card? Yes, please, yeah. Do you think when we use animals, we violate their rights? Of course, yeah. Yeah? So do you think when we use cows for cheese, we violate their rights? Truthfully, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Do it without a doubt. So it sounds like you kind of got the why, just kind of the, yeah. the how almost? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think when we use other animals, we violate their rights? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, it's a good thing what you're doing. Can I give you a card? Yeah, of course. Now back to the main chat. I thought they raised some excellent points how we should all be mindful about our impact on the world we live in. 
I think this was a good example how I learned something from these chats too. It's not just a one-way communication. I was planning to start talking about how veganism has actually helped me to be more mindful about my impact on the environment. However, they were so open in sharing their thoughts around animal use, I thought it was best to leave them space to do that. This to me serves as a good example how when we create a safe space for people to share their thoughts on the topic, it can quite often lead to a positive exchange. Warning, we're about to go deep. Those of you who may have been following me for a while might already know how I like to think about what stage people are in, specifically from a behavioral psychology perspective. For this conversation, I don't think they were in pre-contemplation because they seemed like they'd already given our use of other animals some thought. So I think they were probably in the contemplation stage, which means they've already been thinking about animal use. I found when people appear to be in the contemplation stage that they're usually ready for an in-depth conversation about the ethics, which is part of why when the environment came up, I steered the conversation back to our fellow animals. My hope is that through our conversation and perhaps some other influences, they will be inspired to change in the future like they said they might, and move to that preparation or action stage when they start to live vegan. My outreach cards and my website direct people to the free New Vegan Support Program, Challenge 22, to help empower and support people when they're in these stages. Now a few quick notes on my solo street outreach setup. It's super cheap, under 100 quid, that's pounds or dollars to some, and to be honest, can be done cheaper. It all fits in my backpack and it's super easy to set up and take back down. So if you'd like me to do a detailed video about what I bought and how I use everything to create a catalyst for my street outreach, let me know in the comments. So I've had loads of positive conversations thanks to this setup. However, on this day I was fortunate to collaborate with our local uh, Brighton Animal Rights Collective group. We set up right across from each other so we ha could have a little alleyway of animal rights. I think when it makes sense to do so, we should work to expand our animal advocate community, both from an effectiveness and a sustainability perspective. This all reminds me of the African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. Now this chat was already six months ago, and I'd like to think that I've evolved since then, hopefully in a positive direction. This to me highlights an integral part of all of our animal advocacy, and that's to take an honest look at what we're doing and be willing to adapt and try new things. I've thought about making some videos contrasting my current approach to my older one by breaking down some of my older street interviews. So if you have an interest in seeing me do that and highlighting some of the rights-based language I've used to replace the welfare-based language that I've used in the past, let me know in the comments. I'm really passionate about creating content to help us all explore new ways that we can advocate for our fellow animals in the best way possible. So if you want to see more content around this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Peacefully smash, smash, smash that smash, subscribe button. Smash it, yes. <laughs> I appreciate each and every one of you who takes the time to watch my videos and follow my animal advocacy work so that together we can create a better world for all animals. I'll see you on the streets. Or maybe our houses. Such as is, such as is, such as is which... Oh, you look pretty healthy for a baby. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, don't really need don't really need anything from animals, do we? Just no, you're probably right. Still for the plants through them to us, so. Small change, if everybody does it a bit, it's, uh, it can make a big change, probably. I've been flying from town to town, from London to Taiwan. I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. Thanks for watching, and for free resources such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.